Grand day, all. Welcome. Welcome to the Daily Huddle. My name is Chase Steele Gray. I'm your host for today. Always so excited to be here. We never know what's going to happen, but we know you're going to leave with more than you came with. That for sure. So, as always, to start out, I'd like to start with, usually I say a joke, but today I'm going to say a quote. And it grabbed me because we're going to be speaking about dance a little bit today. So, I grabbed this quote uh, from Fred Astaire. And the quote is, dancing is a vertical interpretation of a horizontal intention. I'm gonna say that again. Dancing is a vertical interpretation of a horizontal intention. Roll that tape. I think I got it down. I think I air drummed that perfectly that time. I've, I've been working on it. Welcome everybody to the Daily Huddle. Lovely to see all your smiling faces. My name is Chase Steele Gray. I am your host for today. We have an amazing guest, one of my favorite people on the planet. And by the way, I have about five favorite people on the planet. It's a small group on the planet. It's a lot of people. Okay. And our guest today is definitely one of them. But before we get into this amazing talk, I'm gonna test the temperature of our lovely faces that I see here. I'm gonna start with one of my favorites. Stan the man. How are you today, sir? Steel Chase. That's right. How are you today? And who will you hug? Hey, hey um, today, man, today I am um I am just excited, man. I, I'm yes. excited. And uh, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna hug my wife. And I'm gonna find somebody else that I don't know today that doesn't mind getting. I like that. I do mm -hmm. that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. good yeah. stuff. <laughs> That's good stuff. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. I'm gonna pick on someone I've never picked on before. Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, gonna say on hello. Gonna to on Harami. Gonna pick on Harami. You knew it. You knew I was going there, didn't you? I yep. saw the name. I was like Harami. How do you say it? Harumi. Harumi. Mm -hmm. Harumi. Yes, you said it right. Harumi. Hi. Harumi. Yes. Hi. Hi. Where are you today? I am in Columbus, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> I knew she was going to say that too. I can feel the COVID. I can but feel I am originally from Toyota, Japan. <laughs> Toyota, Japan? Toyota. Toyota Japan. I've never heard anybody say they're from Toyota, Japan. I've only seen the Toyota on the street. Yeah. It's, it's a big difference, right? <laughs> you see Thank many you so Toyotas on the street. I only see them on the street. I've never been to Toyota, but now I have another place to go. Thank you so much for being with us today. That's great. That's one of the best answers I've ever heard. Toyota Japan. That's amazing. Let's go with the virtue. 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 That's not virtue. What are you grateful for today? Virtue is muted and unavailable. <laughs> Moon Shadow. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, oh, you're there. Hi, how are you? Good, good. I was trying to mute out. No problem. What are you grateful for today? Yeah. I'm grateful to be alive and well and here on the daily huddle. Spectacular, spectacular. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being here. And, uh, yeah. you know, as I said before, one of my favorite people on the planet. The reason why I, I, I love this woman so much is because she shows up as she is from the moment I've ever met her, which is a really tough feat if you think about it, because uh, we're in a world where people are sending their representatives more than not, in my personal opinion. But <laughs> I'm gonna give you a little bit about her and her bio. She was born in a military base, raised by the ocean in Boca Raton, Florida, by an out of the box family life after diving into the life full force, Kathleen found that touching people with her hands was a superpower. Human health and healing is highly in need of the senses, especially touch. At age 40, Kathleen found reflection and gratitude to be the top priority in moving forward with strength and courage to show up for her life. Please welcome the owner of the Boca Ambassadors, 
Kathleen Krabs. Yeah. <laughs> Set it up. Good I just, morning. I just gave you a sitting ovation. I don't know why I did that, but that's okay. Because <laughs> you're amazing. Okay, I'll go with that. Um, so here's the thing. Um, <laughs> what people don't know, and I'll just let you know, Kathleen and I have spent countless hours on the phone. Sometimes I speak to Kathleen and I forget where I'm at. And I just look at my phone and it says 221. I'm like, 221? Not the time, but the amount of time we've been on the phone, which is crazy. And this topic today, I know this is going to sound funny, Kathleen, but I'm telling you the truth. I'm not lying. The, the title today, What Makes You Sing and Dance on the Soul Level, two days ago, I recorded a podcast. I didn't even know about it. I didn't know what your title was going to be. And the title of my podcast is, When Was the Last Time You Were the First Person to Dance? We don't have to unpack that right now. I'm just saying that something about this kind of connection before I even knew your, your title. I knew you were going to be here, but I didn't know about the title. So we're going to unpack that later. But unpack this title for us and, and let us know what this brings to mind for you as it relates to dancing and singing on a soul level. Just, just unpack it in your own way. So regardless of profession, regardless of upbringing, regardless of what we do every day, there's something that helps the physical body express what we're here to do. Right. As long as my soul is dancing and singing, I can, I can go through traffic. I can, I can put my hands on whoever is laying on my table. I can have the strength and the fortitude and the resilience to move through whatever traumas might be going on. Right. As long as I remember to let my soul sing and dance. And that's what that is. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that totally. Um, I, the title I told you about when I talked about the podcast, it happened because I put something up a couple of days ago online. I think you, you may have seen it where I was singing outside and out of nowhere, this lady just came out and started dancing in the middle of everyone. Yeah. Like, like, I, like it was a show, like it was her time to come on the stage. Completely out of nowhere. She was painting. And yeah. then all of a sudden she put her stuff down and she walked over. That's what I'm talking about. Like mm -hmm. no concern about, oh, uh, you know, someone might be offended or maybe someone won't want to see me dance or maybe someone will, you know, throw a can at me. I, you know, whatever people think. She just did it like a child. And you yeah. and I speak about the, the power of children so much because children, they don't have any other choice. They're in a place where nothing has affected them yet. So they do everything they want to do. Without, they don't care if you like them, you don't like them, if they're going to fall, the ice cream's going to fall out of their hand. They don't even care. And that's the place where I personally work at being at as consistently as possible. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? And how does that, like, you have a, 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 a little human being that you're raising. When you watch him, do you get some of that for, from him or are you giving that to him? How do, how do you feel about that? Or it's just a complete circle? I, I think it goes both ways. And mm -hmm. I was reminded recently that the first sound that we hear when we're in the womb is a heartbeat. Ah. Boom, 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 so boom, boom. And in, certain, in, in every culture, there's a link to music. And, right. and, and it, I heard something recently about this man who went to Jamaica when he was 16 and he heard this la da 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 and it was the mailman delivering mail. And in that culture, there's no, there's no barrier between singing and dancing and being alive on the planet as a human. It all goes together. Mm -hmm. And... And this, the same video goes on to mention that this depressed human went to see a shaman and mm. the shaman said, when did you stop singing? And when did you stop dancing? Ah. And that inner child being nurtured constantly, whether it comes up, you know, whatever state we're in, whenever I'm, I'm in a place where I can't move forward, I remember that I, it's essential to sing and dance, at least on a soul level. If I can do it in my human form, yes awesome but at least nurture that inner being that knows that from our 
first time hearing anything, it's a heartbeat. It's a drum beat. It's go back, go back. Because we've gone forward away from it. And then we're talking about the heartbeat thing. That's so great. It's so profound. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's a beat. Um, you know, I don't, I don't remember ever not being affected by song and dance. I don't even remember. I don't remember a time when I didn't sing and dance from when I'm a little kid. I just don't remember it. Yeah. Both of my fathers are advocates or are huge musical jazz heads. So mm -hmm. my wealth of jazz information is so vast. So many songs that I can perform, so many lyrics that I know. And I was thinking when I was in the womb, that music had to have been playing all around me, right? Mm -hmm. To come to this place. Now, where I'm at now, fully immersed in music all the time. <clears throat> I look at people now, I'm on the other side and I'm looking at people who get affected by music. And what baffles me is that like everything else, like when you wanted your favorite ice cream, you go get it. When you want to put your favorite shirt on, you put it on. When you want to hear your favorite song, you put it on. And yet, when I'm singing in a controlled environment in a, in a corporate event or outside or even just with friends, people start to move and they feel the connection between the music, yet many times <clears throat> they don't lean on that when they start to collapse. And I'm like, lean on that. Why would you not? Why would you not put some music on and dance uncontrollably in your house? I do uh, dancing to Afro beats in the morning. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm tiptoeing to put it online, my Afro Beats morning dance, where I just go for it. I think it would be <laughs> so cool, but I'm not there yet. Um, and <laughs> I think most people don't dance and sing because they see it as being mediocre in comparison to the professional singers and dancers. And that's totally not the point. That's, that's what I'm trying to say, right? If Think about it. If every person danced in the morning for five to 10 minutes or one or two songs before they, uh, right after they got out of the bed, before they brushed their teeth, like just right in that quadrant, yep. it would change the day. I know categorically it would change the day. And I think, I know we talked about this a while ago, but I would say with much conviction, you probably dance every day. Yes. You do. Yes. I knew. Mm -hmm. I knew. Yep. And Absolutely. When we talk about what what is your definition of the soul level? Because I think those two words are really important. I think not everybody may understand what the soul level is. How do you how do you define that? So this morning I'm gonna define it like this. Mm -hmm. The innermost part of us that is wounded or healed or whatever, it's it's the inner part that wants to be expressed through our humanness. Right. So it doesn't have to be expressed through the humanness, but as long as it's able to thrive, okay. then our gonna be okay. So it's our it's our inner being. It could be soul, it could be spirit, it could be ethereal body, however you want to describe it. But I say the soul level because it's the depth of the depth of what we came with to this planet, beyond the physical body. So I'm gonna challenge you a little bit. If you're speaking about singing and dancing on the soul level, which I don't know any other way, but that's, this is what I do, so I don't think about it. Uh, you know, if, if, someone, if I'm at an event and there's a first dance and I'm singing a soft song, I know exactly where to go to hit that area I wanna hit. I don't sing it lackadaisically, like literally, I'm not even joking, a few weeks ago, I sang a song that affected me personally. And halfway through the song, I started to cry. But I couldn't cry because I'm at an event with 200 people. And I was like, Ugh. I took a breath and I just, I got rid of it. Cause I was like, no, not now, not now, not now, not now. And it was like, it hit me there. So the challenging question is, what is dancing and singing at another level? Like, give me another level that someone would dance at. That's not a soul level. Where, where would they be? Well, they'd be in the human body. Just in the body, just... Yeah, just letting it all happen, actually, physically. Right. Letting yeah. it all happen, but not deep. Right. To the point I, where it's... You could also dance on the mental level. 
I like okay. this conversation. I really do, because yeah. I'm thinking about all these hmm, dancing yeah. on a mental level, like it's up here only. Yeah. I mean, you can visualize it. It can be in your mind while you're going through traffic or while you're going through a challenging situation, you could still be dancing in the mind, hmm. meaning dancing with ideas, dancing with thought, dancing right. with- Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I totally get that and I totally do yeah. that all the time. Yeah, right. absolutely, so absolutely. Physical, mental, spiritual, emotional. I mean, it's all a dance, right? Mm, levels, man. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know why, like a whole, a whole new cavern of different things opened up in my mind just now when you said that last thing. Um, <clears throat> for somebody who is a little bit closed right now, mm -hmm. they have some stuff going on, they just went through a divorce, they just lost their job, they're in the hospital, you know, healing from a, an ailment. What advice would you give them to move in the direction of singing and dancing on a soul level to kind of organically pull themselves out of it? Like, what do you, what would you suggest? Well, the first part of dance is standing up, right? Right. So taking a breath, making the breath move through the body to the point where you can actually stand up. Right. And, and just be awake in the human body. So in the mind, standing up would be acknowledging gratitude, acknowledging that we're breathing and taking steps because dance is just movement and steps, right? Correct. So so taking steps towards gratitude, hope, peace, um, manifesting, um, visualization. I mean, taking steps in that direction um, and even, even just being grateful for the journey um, and, and going into the possibility of, of what might become when I take my mind out of the pain, because that's a step. It's a step away from the actual place that I'm at. Because I mean, listen, we've all gone through, we, we were all in these traumatic situations, either on a soul level, physical, mental, it, it happens. Right. And first thing to do to get out of that is to take a step in a different direction. So step out of the body and go into a visualization in the mind or into a, a spiritual practice or into something of poetry or something that brings the body and the mind and the spirit out of the physical reality. And that's taking steps. And that's the start of the dance. Right. Um, I may have asked you this last time, but my mind is coming from a different place than when we spoke last time. <clears throat> how often, first of all, just a quick question. How often do you massage people? Like in a month, how many people do you massage? I mean. Roughly. At least one a day. So we'll okay, just so go 30 to 50. About one a day. See, that's a lot of people. Um, the question that I have for you is like you and I, we relate on a very spiritual level. We've known each other over 10 years. We get it. Like we understand. When you are working on a body, and this happened to me, do you sometimes get to a place where you hit like a wall with them and you want to ask them, can you go further? Or if there's something I'm getting from you, I'm gonna give you some information about some particular area that could be stuck or have some, um, uh, an, an area that's keeping them from moving. And do you do that? Meaning like, we're talking about this topic now, but when you feel it in the body, I'm just imagining you being connected to so many energies in one month. It's like, I don't know how you keep your own clarity and balance when you're connected to so many, I, I wanna say toxicity, but I'm not sure if it's that, if it's, I should say toxins from other people that work their way around. And then what do you do? How do you cleanse for yourself as a professional that's around all these, you know, people that are in that space? So I think there's two parts to your question. First of all, there's an invitation. Um, if I feel open that they might be willing to receive any information that's coming, I ask them. Right. Um, so ask how pressure is a lot of times just to right. make sure Okay, going in the directions that I'm going mm -hmm. in their physical body. And then sometimes they pour out and tell me things. And I, I just have to open a vortex in my own 
um, visualization space where right. I, I saw the gold white light of, of white heaven, light. honestly, to wash through me and through the person into a fire pit at the end of the table where wow. I'm not doing anything to come into me. I'm literally flowing everything that's amazing through me and, and through them to cleanse whatever I can on on those levels and whether they're open to that or not, I don't have to share that information with them that I'm doing that for myself. Um, but I, but I do have a way of checking in with them on the human level and it's verbal and it's an invitation and it's, are you open to receiving anything about your body or anything about whatever? Um, cause a lot of things come and a lot of resistance comes sometimes. Um, and a lot of times they're, they're not open and that's okay. I just kind of work behind the scenes and do whatever I can. Right. And when they are open, it's incredible because they pour out and they speak. And often, you know, we store everything in our body. So if I touch them here, they, they might have a trauma that happened 20 years ago and they start telling me a story. Right. So I don't even have to ask a lot of times. It just comes out. Yeah. And I just wash that. I figured that. And uh, I, I don't know if I told you this, but the last time I had a massage, the woman said, I'm getting a lot of information from your chakras. Do you mind if I read your chakras? And I said, no. Wow. She said some stuff to me that was so on point. And then the tears came out. And I was like, she's like, great, you're doing great. Don't worry. And I was like, okay, I'm good. I was just like, how did you get that stuff? It was like so clear to her. It was like, she just read it on the paper. You know, it mm -hmm. wasn't random. She said some serious stuff. I was like, wow. Cool. Um, so I want to take some questions from anyone, if, if anyone has a question at this point, because I know this is a lot of information and, and, and maybe someone wants to kind of open up on something. So if you have a question, please, please come on in and uh, let me know what's on your mind. No? Okay, that's fine. We have some nice, attentive people today. Hey! Oh! How is everybody doing? This is Cece. I, I um, find this all interesting, and thank you so much for bringing the topic up, because the body does speak without words, and when a person is generous enough to share what's going on in their body, that could be a gift, because it gives them the opportunity to be free and release it through their words so thank you and you're releasing it through the massage massaging and thank you so much for coming today <laughs> thank you for having me it's an honor to be on the planet i just you know i can't i can't bring anything but the top level people into this space because i'm so respectful of everyone that comes together to be here and kathleen is I, I can never properly describe what you are, how you are, because it seems so multifaceted and it seems so under par when I choose a word to describe you. But <laughs> there's only certain people in, in, in life that you connect with that you're like, oh, yeah, let's talk about that. Or yeah, we can talk about that. And you leave feeling, you know, refreshed, better, more insightful, more information, whatever. That's what you do. So, you know, um, I, I always tell you how I'm fascinated by the dance or by dancing. Um, I, <laughs> um, uh, back to that video again, that girl came over to me and she started dancing with me. She was like, come on, let's dance together. I was like, all right. And I did it. And I was thinking to myself while I was dancing, like there's certain people's body that don't connect right away to dancing. They're stuck in, I'm gonna look bad. No, I'm not a dancer. Thank you so much. No, I never dance. All, all the things that you hear, right? Or the most yeah. famous, I won't dance. Why should I? I sing all, I sing that song all the time. But I hope that we've opened some people's minds up as it relates to, you don't have to be a singer or a dancer. People say to me all the time, can you teach me how to sing? I go, yeah, I can. You can? I'm like, yeah, because I know some stuff that you probably don't know. I can go into a place that you are not gonna go into, right? I've even taught dance before. I've even made choreography for people. 
but that came from being on the field. And that's my point. That came from doing it, but you feel so good on a soul level. That's what you were saying. It's like, I would love to perfectly explain what goes on in my chest when I'm singing and dancing. It's, it's so hard for me to show someone. It's like the best cake from your mom and the best pie and the best massage with the best breeze blowing through your hair. Like, I don't know. It's like so overwhelming. That's why I want people to do, and I, and I, and I pose a challenge to everyone on the call today. Get up in the morning and just for one song, just one, just dance in front of the mirror. And if it doesn't even have to be in front of the mirror and just let it happen. I challenge you to not feel better after that one song or feel something elevated in you that was not there after you got up. I challenge you for that. And you can contact me through here, through um, any of the social medias. I just want to know what it feels like to people. Kathleen's information is definitely there on her bio. I would totally, totally recommend you going to see Kathleen if you're in the Boca area. Her number is there. She's on social media. She's a fantastic human being. And if you have the chance to transfer some of, get some of her energy onto your body, it can't hurt you. That's all I'm saying. It can't hurt you. Gio, how are you? Um, so, Kathleen, I will give you uh, the last word in the, in the talk today. Anything that you want to kind of send off with everyone uh, on the Zoom today about this magnificent topic of singing and dancing on a soul level or any of the things that you uh, feel right now. Yay. So but what's coming is, is just dance as if no one's watching mm -hmm. and whatever that means for you, whether, whether it's in your mind, yes, Gio. Yes. Vocal, in your body, be be alive. And if it's just taking a deep breath when you're sitting somewhere and that's the first movement towards your dance, do it. Breathe deeply and often and move your body because it's water and water needs movement to stay healthy and it doesn't matter what it looks like. That's truth. I couldn't have said it any better than that. You know, um, I'm glad we have this conversation because I think Certain people need to hear this. It's right there in front of us. We, we, all, we can all see it, but we need to hear it. And now that we've heard it, hopefully someone on this Zoom today will be like, you know what, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna get up and dance in the morning. There's no judgment. You don't need to judge yourself. You're not auditioning for the next Broadway musical. It's just your, your body, allowing your body to elongate and, and move around and do things for fluidity that can lead to more um, happiness and oxygenation and all this great, this great stuff. So <laughs> we're going to, we're going to send off now. Uh, I appreciate everyone being here today. I would like to say before we leave, as always to remind you of our tenants that we love to carry around with us because they change our world. First and foremost, live out loud, please live out loud even more than you are right now. Love harder because that is what we need right now in life. More love to spread to everyone who is struggling, right? Move your body, move with intention, move with the motion of your soul. Like we said, move as much as possible. Eat mostly plant-based. Every time I say this, I think about the people who've never tried it before. Give yourself a gift. Eat mostly plant-based just for three or four days. See what happens. See how your body feels. Of course, sleeping, so important. I say it to myself every day, Chase, stop going to bed so late, get more sleep, get more sleep, right? With the active lizard brain that I have, it's very difficult many times, just keeping it real. And mm -hmm. <laughs> also, please, please check yourself in the mirror. Check yourself before you have the damaging thought, the negativity, the hateful thought, the regretful thought. Check yourself and ask yourself, is that going to push you forward? Or is that going to bring you back? My good people, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Kathleen, as always. I will bring you back again and again and again because you are wonderful. Thank you all for joining us on the Zoom. My name is Chase Steele Gray. 
I will see you again next Tuesday, but I will be here every day listening to the insights. Have a spectacular day and better, create a spectacular day. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Chase. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Excellent job. CC, bye.